You're listening to Beauty Bites with Dr. K, Secrets of a Plastic Surgeon, and today on the podcast, this is really exciting, we're meeting the famous Coco Moco. Thank you. She is fabulous. Coco's a marketing professional with such a solid background in entertainment and digital media, and I know you've seen her on TikTok, I have, and YouTube. She analyzes internet phenomenon and trends. And Coco has a podcast as well. It's called Ahead of the Curve with Coco Moco. And she dives into all these topics weekly, like what trends are going viral in 2024, all about predictions and insights into digital media. And this is going to be such a great chat because we're going to talk a little bit about how aesthetics is evolving and changing. And then just how to be a boss girl, what's new in marketing, and all the things you guys need to know about trend forecasting. Yes, thank you for having me. I'm so excited. I'm such a fan too. So oh, thank you. It's fun to meet someone online, online on TikTok or on the gram and then meet them in person. It's yeah. almost surreal, right? It is, yeah. Sometimes it's like people say I'm like a lot more talkative in person than they think I'd be. Because oh, I think I'm more quiet online, but it's fun to see how they are in person. I love your reserved voice online and she's like a talking head video where she's holding her microphone. Mm -hmm. And she says, tell, say, oh, your, yes, say your own little intro. Yeah, the tagline that people will like come up to when they recognize me and say it, but it's, um, Hi, I'm Kokomoko. I work in media, and I've made a career off of accurately predicting trends and rising stars. And that's like the That's intro. amazing. And I think that little credentialing statement really set you aside and branded you. Thank you. Set you apart from the crowd. Yeah, I know. I I sometimes it's like a, a dice roll. Some people love it, some people hate it, but the numbers don't lie. Like whenever I say it in a video, it converts so many followers compared mm -hmm. to the same exact video, similar, but if I don't say it. So I think people like when if you say an intro, they're like, okay, this is who they are, this is what can, I can expect from them, mm -hmm. let me follow along. The psychology of like telling them your authoritativeness or your, you know, mm -hmm. your background, because they actually don't know who you are. So yeah. I need to start doing that, and you'd be like, I'm Dr. K. Duray Raj, and I'm a facial plastic surgeon, right? <laughs> yeah, I try it in a few videos. I also think, because at least like now, once you get a bigger audience, it's not as much, but people see hundreds of videos on their feed a day, mm -hmm. and so it's like nice to have someone introduce themselves, because then they, it just feels more familiar and memorable. Do you think you're much more active on TikTok or Instagram? Do you have a preference these days? I'm definitely more active on TikTok, just because it's like so easy to film there, but on Instagram, I've been more active this month, because I'm just doing a challenge where I try to post a photo every single day on my feed and it's been it's been like a creative muscle that I'm working that I haven't worked in a long time. Good. What did you call your challenge? You gave it a name. Yeah, it's the 20 tons Instagram challenge and uh, my followers have been posting along too and it's where the rules are like you're real for the day, like that can't count and it has to be something that is just one photo, um, something that made you happy that day or a selfie and like not a to still care. photo not a story and right not just a, a still photo yeah okay. and not like a photo dump that like took yeah. a bunch of effort because those photo dumps are so hard like yeah. people make them look effortless but they're not so um just bringing back kind of the old selfie days of instagram the feeling good just documenting yeah. what makes you happy old school instagram old school yeah i love that i think instagram has become harder and harder to grow mm -hmm. and slightly more frustrating to creators just because it feels very curated and it has to be very rehearsed and perfect yeah and that's the beauty of tiktok it's just laugh have fun and scroll 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 and nothing really matters it's like right and if something sticks you're gonna dive deep on that page and yeah you know, yeah, I always, I think the beauty of TikTok specifically is like, there's obviously its flaws, but with TikTok, no one really cares about your flops, so mm -hmm. like people look at videos on the For You page, so if they're seeing your video, it's because it's already gotten good views, and the people that watch videos on their following, they're usually like the really loyal fans, so they're the ones that don't care how many views you get, they're going to comment and support no matter what. That's so true. Um, are you finding that TikTok is just blowing people up in an effort to get more TikTok shoppers? Oh, oh my gosh, TikTok shop is so fascinating the way they push videos that have TikTok mm -hmm. shop linked to it. Um, yeah, I actually did an experiment with TikTok shop where I posted a video, it was like one of my normal three minute talking videos and 
I linked out the microphone that I was using and I don't even mention the microphone until like two minutes into the video and it jumped to like 900,000 views the same day wow. and it didn't have super like high engagement so I, I mean it had engagement but I think it was like the algorithm saw that there was a chance for them to make commission off yes. my link and so they pushed the video and then the microphone actually like sold out the next day awesome yeah so That's it so worked cool. but it mm -hmm. really does work it's kind yeah. of interesting what they're driving us to do though as a mm -hmm. culture like they're really yeah. driving shopping they're really driving live streaming have you mm -hmm. tried live streaming yeah I do live streaming every now and then um, live streaming is a little more dicey I have a few like um, like more public figure clients that I'm like don't go live like <laughs> there's a few people that I'm like um, it's okay like you don't have to go live I don't know it'll be a little bit of loose cannon um, but for any time I have lived, um, it, it does help like the recent videos that you post. Like I'm, I think, I don't know for sure, TikTok's never confirmed it, but sometimes I'll post a video and if I really want it to perform well, like if it's a branded deal, if you go live for like the 30 minutes you're live, your most recent video gets like pushed in the algorithm. Interesting. Okay, mm -hmm. we're going to have to try some TikTok live. We've done Instagram mm -hmm. live and then that's been pretty successful too. Yeah. yeah. Do you just like answer questions that people are asking? Or? I'll do like a live injection demo oh, and I'll talk nice. my way through it and then someone will read me the questions as they come in. Wow. And it's crazy that people see this from all over the planet, like Japan mm -hmm. and India and China, everywhere. So yeah. it's pretty amazing. Yeah, I, I think live streaming is, I always say it's like more about companionship. So even if the phone's just like propped up in the corner of the room and you're not acknowledging it, mm -hmm. like people just like feeling like they're in the room. I Sometimes I get sucked into like watching these yeah, live streams Jane. where, yeah, yeah, there's one where it's like a bar in like Ohio and they just like put their phone in the corner of the room and I'm like, um, Really? Like, if I'm not going out that night and it comes up on my feet, I'll watch a few minutes. It's just interesting just to see. It'll just be a bug on the wall. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like sitting at a cafe and just just absorbing yeah. what's going on around you. I should mm -hmm. do that. We'll leave the phone in the corner mm -hmm. and just film as people come in. There's so much yeah. fun and, and excitement in aesthetics. Yeah. yeah, and there's, like, such a cool visual to aesthetics, like a before and after or, like, the exactly. facial is really visual. How do you do your research for trend forecasting? Yeah, so I think of my research and kind of like what, when I do like the consulting side of my job, so much of it is just listening. Like for me, a lot of the research is truly just spending time on the platforms. Mm -hmm. And like, since it's my job, like my screen time is so high, but say I spend like five hours on TikTok, like my clients are paying me because maybe they don't have five hours to spend on TikTok. Mm -hmm. So a lot of it comes from that. And if it's, if I'm getting a lot more technical, like, um, looking on, uh, like Google trends, there's like websites, you can even go on, Google has their new kind of version of chat GBT called Google Bard, and you can ask it questions like, what's the top three, um, categories that people are searching on Google about mm -hmm. plastic surgery, and they'll give you like the three top procedures that people are searching that month or something. Nice. So you're gonna take incorporate a little AI into your efforts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. it gives it you like the data to back up what you're hearing online. And then, how are you predicting what's gonna really go viral from those trends? Because it seems like that's the pathway to success. You come out with a new product. There's so many products out there that unless you make a viral video, you're really not going to have a chance of success. Yeah, it's it really is like such an attention economy. Um, so much of it is like one, every account and like person is different. So really thinking about like one, like that, like one person, their account might go more viral when they do 30 second videos, someone might go more viral when they do three minute videos. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it's really just like per each person, but I actually, um, it sounds counterintuitive, but if I'm, uh, if I want a campaign to go viral, I'll actually try to tune out um, every other account in that niche. Mm -hmm. Like if I'm consulting, say for like a company that sells strawberries, mm -hmm. hypothetically, I don't want to look at any other food vendor TikToks because then you're subconsciously just going to kind of mimic them. Totally. But what you can do is look at how 
people are going viral in completely different niches. Mm -hmm. So like maybe I'll look at, if I'm trying to give advice to a strawberry company, maybe I'll look at like a viral shoe campaign that happened last month mm -hmm. and be like, how can you take that campaign but not make it for food? Mm -hmm. So I try to look at how other niches are going viral and then bring it to whatever the, um, the company is that wants to yes. find their stride. That's pretty brilliant because I think when you're in an industry, you get caught up in looking at competition mm -hmm. and then there's the fear of missing out that you're not doing the trends they're doing and then yeah. you just fall into the same old content yeah. that everybody's making. Right. And like if someone's already in your niche and making a certain kind of content, you can copy them like word for word, but you probably aren't going to convert followers even if you go viral because they're like, well, I already follow the original. Yeah. So like really just bringing your own flavor to it is important. That has been um, challenging for us. I feel like we started early on in aesthetics doing a lot of social media and being kind of an industry pioneer, wearing pink gloves, and now everyone wears pink gloves. <laughs> <laughs> Back in the day, I was the only one. And, um, you know, doing time-lapse videos and things that maybe you've seen on page. Mm -hmm. But I'm trying to think of m myself, too. Like, how do I innovate? How do I change? What is going to be more meaningful to the viewer right now? Do you have any ideas what the viewer is craving? Yeah, I think um, one, just any kind of job like this, because so many people um, are lonely and are working from home now in a lot of industries. So again, like having like a live stream, I think mm. is cool as long as like the community, clients are okay like with building it. Building community. Yeah, like I think people want to like voyeuristically be in an office, but okay. they don't want to actually drive there. So True. I think giving them that feeling too would yeah. really help stand out. Um, and yeah, just I think like living, you know, work with me for an hour Monday mornings or something. And oh, that's a great me. idea. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna do it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. You get advice from Coco. We should do that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what do you not like about what you're seeing on TikTok right now? Um, if there's anything. Yeah, honestly, there's two things that come to mind. One, I would say the, and it's it's funny because I report on trends, but I, I teach them more in a way of like, um, you know, pay attention to trends so maybe you can do the opposite or give people something that they're missing. But there's an emphasis on like aesthetics and cores, like cottage core or... Yes. Um, and I think I, whatever, clean girl, clean girl yeah, yeah, whenever like I'm reporting on trends, I never try to use vocabulary like aesthetic or core because it implies that the person has to like completely change who they are. Like mm -hmm. they have to go out and buy new clothes, new this, new that. Mm -hmm. Um, I try to lean more into like, here's a makeup technique or here's like a, a way to film technique that might be. So mm -hmm. I'm not big on like the idea of cores cause I think it's, telling people that they have to like over consume to change yes. um, themselves and then one other thing about like TikTok specifically I just made a video on that I think is really fascinating and sad but like um, there's a growing concern around like the search bar suggestions on TikTok I don't know if you've ever like mm -hmm. seen a viral video and then at the top it'll be like da 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 like mm -hmm. um, and there's just uh, there's a lot of conversations happening right now about how the search bar is kind of seen as an authority and sometimes it'll like maybe spread misinformation or things yeah. like that. So that's something I'm keeping my eye on about TikTok that I think is mm -hmm. maybe a part of the platform they just have to develop a little better. But mm -hmm. yeah. And maybe they're intentionally pushing their search the direction mm -hmm. they want it to go. Right. Yeah. 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 It's interesting. Yeah, I think that whole clean girl aesthetic put a lot of pressure on women and girls to be a certain way and not not think that they could show their face on the gram or TikTok unless they had a clean girl aesthetic. Mm -hmm. So it was such a like an hour long of makeup application to look like you spent no time putting makeup. <laughs> yes. To look I'd made up. <laughs> yeah, and there's so many like intersectional layers to it as well. Uh -huh. Where like maybe um, there's so many intersectional layers to it where Maybe like, um, you know, like a white woman like myself could easily be like, oh, I'm going for the clean girl aesthetic where yeah. someone else might be penalized at work for being like, you're not putting yourself together. Like, why aren't you yeah. wearing your hair a certain way? So I think there's a lot of layers to the conversation around aesthetics and cores as well. Mm -hmm. Why do people crave these kind of trends? Is it just to seek 
um, meaningful inclusion that now I want to put on my mob wife as that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No. Why am I so drawn to that? <laughs> yeah, I think you're spot on. I think it's like um, an immediate um, ability to be a part of a group okay. and you can just do it through the way that you look. I think also just the um, wanting to go viral. I think mm -hmm. like core and aesthetic is a buzzword and so people it's kind of like the the fast fashion of mm -hmm. um, of trending and influencing culture is by um, leaning into these things and yeah I, I think it is just that more so people want to be a part of the community mm -hmm. yeah yeah when you ride the trend and you get to feel like you're like one of the one of the crowd mm -hmm. that's doing this fun stuff yeah um, on your podcast have you uh, got a special way of choosing your topics that you're going to talk about, what's timely, or who you're going to invite on there? Yeah, for me, a lot of the times it'll be if I make a video that week on TikTok that goes really viral, and there's a lot of like good questions about it and stuff, I'm like, oh, I feel like I could probably talk about this for like 30 plus minutes. Um, so I'll do that. And then in terms of guests, I've been not doing as many guests just because I noticed like for some reason my solo episodes do really really well mm -hmm. um and I I think that'll be a trend in terms of the podcasting realm is we're gonna see um kind of the rise of like solo podcasts I think for so long it's been co-host or mm -hmm. um needing to have um like tons of guests but um really loving the solo episodes and then in terms of like when I do have guests on um, if someone comes up on my For You page that I think is really interesting and could um, grow and like have more of an audience, I like to get them on my podcast first so then like when they start growing online and people look up more information about them, my interview like surfaces at the top. Um, so that's kind of one way I do it as well. That's a great strategy. Mm -hmm. And in terms of your viral forecast for 2024, can you talk about some of those? You did a whole um, podcast, or actually also a TikTok, on what you were predicting. Yes. What are some of those predictions? Yeah, for 2024, um, I think that we are going to see um, someone go viral. This is more in like the, the fashion realm, and I guess I've kind of like... I've been like anticipating this for a while now, but I think that we're gonna see a creator go viral who wears like the same outfit over and over again and sees how many mm. events they can wear it to, red carpets, um, mm. is a way to kind of like send the message as well that people don't always have to like constantly be buying things. I think that'll be an interesting thing mm. that we'll see and um, goes along with like people becoming more aware of how social media pushes um, trends and it's I'll, almost like you can make the trend happen if mm -hmm. you talk about the trend is that isn't that so interesting because yeah. I've noticed in our practice when I start saying this is what's hot and this is what mm -hmm. you need to be doing like we can create a trend yeah so much of trends is like manufactured in that way I think usually accidentally um, and I actually there was a an article um, recently, I'm not sure if it's coming out yet, but I was talking to the journalist where they're using the word um, like viral inflation and it's where they've actually seen companies and people go viral for an idea before it's even viral, but they'll be like, did you hear about this viral bread recipe? Mm. And even if that it recipe isn't is, even viral yet. But putting the word viral in front of it makes it's people so be like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is, it's like, it's like a, I think audiences are getting smarter and they're like, wait, that's yeah. actually viral. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think that talking about things, um, and I think sometimes it also just happens on accident. Like you mm -hmm. are reporting on something and then it becomes a bigger trend. Mm -hmm. I think when you predict a forecast and mm -hmm. you, know, you put the idea in people's heads and then they see it in a few places yeah. and then it just takes on a life of its own. Yeah. It's so interesting. Like, I always say for me, I'm, I'm the coach, not the player. Like, I <laughs> love talking about trends, and my favorite part of it is seeing, like, the brilliant creators or people who then make videos and kind of bring my idea to life in a way that I couldn't have. Do you have some creators that really are um, so interesting that you're just totally following what they're doing or they inspire you? 